So today I'm gonna speak to you about false friends between Portuguese and English. So what are false friends? Do you know those words that look similar in both languages, in Portuguese and English, but then you use the Portuguese words and people are like puzzled looking at you? You know why? Because actually they, they do look similar, but they are not similar in terms of meaning. And that's what we call false friends. So it can happen between a lot of different languages. Uh, but today I'm going to speak about uh, those that happen between Portuguese and English. So, to start, I'm going to um, tell you about the words amassar and amass in English. So, amassar versus amass. So, while in English the words amass means to accumulate, in Portuguese, the word amassar, so a very similar word, means uh, to mash or to knead instead. So, for example, you can say, eu vou amassar o pão. I'm going to knead the, the bread, right? Or the dough. Um, another example with acumular, that's to accumulate, that's what to amass means. So, you can say, É por isso que é essencial acumular sabedoria local. That is why it's crucial to amass local knowledge, you know, the knowledge from the people. Okay? The second of pair of false friends is advertir versus advert. They do sound similar, but they don't seem the same. They don't mean the same. So um, advertir means to warn someone of something in Portuguese um, and advert, if you want to say advert in Portuguese, you're going to have to say anuncio publicitario, anuncio publicitario. For example, ele advertiu-a dos perigos que vinham com o emprego. That means he warned her about the dangers that came with the job. Okay, uh, if you see uh, a sentence where it says o anúncio publicitário está muito bem conseguido, it means that the advert was really well done, well made. Okay, then we have agenda versus agenda. So in Portuguese, agenda is kind of like a planner like a book where you plan your life, basically. And if you want the English agenda in Portuguese, you have to uh, say the os planos para o dia, os planos para hoje, o, o plano para uh, esta reunião. So this is basically the meeting's agenda or the day's agenda, you know. So it's somehow plano, okay? Um, then we have alias versus alias, I think you say it in English. So they are very similar, they only have one accent that makes them different, but they have very different meanings. So alias in, in Portuguese means um, actually, you know, or in fact. In, in English, okay? And alias, if you want to say that in Portuguese, it's gonna be a cognom. So um, you can see um, a sentence, let's say, with alias, the Portuguese word. For example, eu gosto de pão. Alias, eu gosto de todos os tipos de pão. That means I like bread, actually, or in fact, I like all kinds of bread, all right? Then we have alunu versus alumnus. So again, two very similar words with different meanings. Alunu means student and alumnus in Portuguese, it's gonna be an ex-student, right? Someone that already left the university or the school or whatever, okay? Um, then we have anticipar and anticipate. Uh, though they do sound similar, they are different as well. So to anticipar in Portuguese 
means to um, to move something to an earlier date. Imagine you have a meeting and you want to move it to an earlier date or an earlier hour. You're gonna say eu vou antecipar a reunião. I'm gonna move the meeting up. I think you say up, right? So to an earlier uh, hour or date, okay? Um, while anticipate in Portuguese, we say prever. Prever is to an anticipate, all right? Then we have antena and anthem. So antena in Portuguese is the same as anten antenna in English, right? What you have on top of the TV. And if you want to say anthem in Portuguese, you have to say ino, ino with an H, okay? If you want to uh, know how to pronounce or, or how to pronounce the age in Portuguese, you can check this video over here. All right. Okay. And then we have uh, aparelho versus apparel. So aparelho means an equipment of any kind, while apparel in Portuguese will be vestimenta. Okay, vestimenta. All right. Then we have apontamento and appointment. They are two different things. Apontamento is when I take a note. For example, in class, I take a note. Eu tiro um apontamento. Uh, an appointment in Portuguese will be either a marcação. Marcação is, we use this more if you have, for example, a doctor's appointment or um, hairdresser's appointment, uma marcação no cabeleireiro, uma marcação no médico, ok? Um, we also can say compromisso, compromisso, it's like when you have uh, something scheduled that you can't miss, ok? Um compromisso. Ok, then we have assistir versus assist, to assist. Assistir means to watch something and normally we say this when in Portugal when we're gonna uh, watch a football game or you know a match of some kind we don't really use it for TV or to watch something on TV there we say ver televisão and we also don't use it to say watch some kind of movie in the cinema we also say ver o filme but we use it to watch a football game or to watch a match of some kind you know so um yeah that's assistir and to assist in portuguese will be ajudar okay ajudar uh, sometimes we also use assistir as uh, in this sense, uh, if you say the doctor assisted the patient in the, in the sense of help the patient, we can also say o doente assistiu o paciente, but normally, like for example, if it's the client that assisted the, the or sorry, the store manager that assisted the client, then we're going to say o gerente da loja ajudou o cliente. So we're going to use ajudar instead. Okay, moving on, we have assumir versus assume. So assumir means to take charge of something or to admit something. I can, if I admit that I made a mistake, I can say eu assumo que cometi um erro. All right, but also it's a lot to uh, we use it a lot as to take charge. So, eu, ele assumiu o cargo de primeiro-ministro. So, he took charge as a prime minister, for example. Okay? Assume in Portuguese is going to be presumir. Presumir. Eu presumi que ela viesse. I assume that she would come. All right? Then we have atender versus to attend, attend, right? Atender we use more um, when we say eu atendi o telefone, I picked up, so as pick up the phone, for example. We can also uh, use atender as to tend, like I will tend to the client, eu vou atender o cliente, we also use. Um, and to attend actually is going to be participar, 
uh, in Portuguese. Participar. Eu participei uh, na conferência, ok? I attended the conference, for example. Then we have atualmente versus actually. So atualmente means nowadays. Be careful, I see a lot of people making this mistake. Atualmente in Portuguese is nowadays, all right? It's not to be confused with actually, which in Portuguese we say na verdade. So atualmente temos menos casos de coronavírus em Portugal has to come. Uh, so nowadays or right now, it can also be translated as right now, we have less cases of coronavirus in Portugal. And then another one with actually will be na verdade, eu gostaria de ir convosco. Actually, I would like to go with you. Okay, na verdade. Be careful with that one. Then we have balcão and balcony. So, um, balcão means actually counter and balcony means, uh, or we say balcony as varanda, okay? I think they kind of come from the same family tree, but they don't mean the same. Then we have, be careful with this one, beef versus beef in, in English, right? Beef actually comes from the word beef, but we use beef to refer to any steak, a steak, okay? And beef is gonna be carne de vaca, so cow meat, right, in Portuguese, carne de vaca, okay? Then we have two very similar words and also confusing because they both go in your head. We have boné and bonnet. I don't know if that's really how you say it, but I think the Portuguese word comes from uh, the other one or vice versa but so uh, boné means cap so if it's sunny you put a cap on põe o boné a bonnet can be either gorro which is like a uh, winter kind of hat right or toca which is what you put if you don't want to make your hair wet uh, when you go in the swimming pool for example okay then we have casualidade versus casualty. It's totally different. So casualidade means chance in Portuguese. For example, encontrei o por casualidade. That means I met him by chance. I wasn't expecting, I just met him. And casualty in Portuguese is gonna be vítima, okay? Não houve vítimas. There were no casualties. Good, right? Okay, and then colar in Portuguese versus color in English. So colar means actually necklace and color in Portuguese is either gonna be trela, if you're speaking about your dog's color, or gola. Gola is this that I have here, gola, okay? Then we have colégio versus college. Colégio in Portugal means private school. If you want to say college, you should say faculdade, okay? Uh, <clears throat> they are similar, but they don't mean the same. Then we have compreensivo versus comprehensive, also different things. Compreensivo is when someone is understanding, compreensivo. Comprehensive, we will say as extensivo or abrangente. A text can be extensivo ou abrangente. O texto é extensivo. The text is comprehensive. Ela foi muito compreensiva. She was very understanding. Okay? Then we have compromisso versus compromise. So, comp compromisso means um, an appointment. Eu tenho um compromisso. I have an appointment. Às 19, at 7. Um, compromise, to compromise in Portuguese is fazer um acordo. To, yeah, to compromise. All right? Fazer um acordo. Then we have two words that are said this, no, that are written the same way. They're not said the same way and they don't mean the same, which is costume versus costume. Costume. Yeah, costume. So costume 
is um, a habit in Portuguese and costume in Portuguese is gonna be traje or fantasia if it's like for the carnival for example okay then you have conceito versus conceit so conceito is a concept while conceit we're gonna say as arrogancia arrogancia convicto versus convict convicto is when you are sure or certain about something. Eu estou convicta uh, de que ele vem. I am sure that he's coming. Or then um, you have the convict that's gonna be prisioneiro or preso. O prisioneiro foi levado para a prisão. The convict was taken to jail. Okay, don't confuse the two words because they mean something totally different. Then we have, again, two words that are written exactly the same. Data versus data. So data in Portuguese means date. And data, if you want to say that in Portuguese, you have to say dados. Okay, dados. Then we have decepção versus deception. Be careful because decepção used to be written with a P, now with a new orthographical agreement is no longer written with a P. Um, but anyways, they are still very similar words and uh, this decepção means a disappointment, not to confuse with deception, which in Portuguese is engano or logro, right? When someone uh, cheats, right? <clears throat> and deceives you. Then we have defensor and defendant. Defensor is someone that defends something or someone in Portuguese. Defendant, you're gonna say réu in Portuguese, okay? Réu. Dente versus dent. So, uh, similar words again. But one means tooth, so dente is a tooth, one tooth. And a dent in Portuguese is gonna be a molgadela. I like this word, a molgadela. All right. Then we have diversão versus diversion. Two different words. Diversão is when you have fun, so it's basically fun. And diversion is gonna be desvio in Portuguese. Desvio. Moving on to educado versus educated. This one is more or less a false friend. When we say ele é educado, we normally mean that he is well-mannered or polite, okay? That someone is well-mannered or polite. We can also use it as educated, like ele foi educado nas melhores escolas. He was educated in the best schools. But normally, when you hear the word educado, it's gonna refer to uh, someone that is well-mannered or polite. So bear that in mind. Then we have estrangeiro versus stranger. Two words that probably come from the same family, but they mean a bit different things. So estrangeiro is gonna be a foreigner, while stranger is gonna be estranho or desconhecido. Okay, uh, so someone you don't know. Then you have escolar versus scholar. Escolar is everything that has to do with the school, that relates to school. While a scholar in Portuguese, it's gonna be erudito, erudito. Then we have esperto versus expert. Again, I think they come from the same family because esperto means smart, while expert in Portuguese is gonna be especialista, especialista, okay? Or fast especialista. It's a weird <laughs> uh, word to say, I know. Then we have esquisito versus exquisite, two similar words, I mean different things again. Esquisito means strange or weird. If you want to say exquisite, you're gonna have to say refinado or fenomenal. 
Okay, so phenomenal, also kind of a um, synonym. Okay, enrollar versus enroll. So when you want to enroll to a course, you're not going to say enrollar because enrollar means to roll something. If you want to say enroll, you're going to have to say inscrever-se. Inscrever-se. Eu inscrevi-me no curso de francês. I enrolled in the French course, for example. Then we have eventualmente and eventually. Eventualmente means maybe. There's a possibility. Eventually should be translated as finalmente. Finalmente, ok? So, some examples. Eventualmente poderei encontrá-la na festa. Maybe I can meet her at the party. Maybe. And with eventually we have Nós quase que não apanhávamos o comboio, mas finalmente conseguimos. We almost didn't catch the train, but eventually we made it. Ok? Uh, so, don't confuse these two. Then we have AZ2 versus EXIT. AZ2 in Portuguese means success, while EXIT is SAÍDA. SAÍDA. Excitante versus exciting. Um, this one can be tricky because, okay, we can also use excitante as exciting, but it's not so common. Normally we use empolgante instead to say exciting. Excitante can be a bit more related to arousing. Okay, arousing. Fábrica versus fabric. This also can be a bit confusing. Fábrica is a factory in Portuguese. If you want to say fabric, you should say tecido. Tecido. Físico versus physician. So the F and the PH are going to sound the same. <clears throat> okay, so the words are similar when you say them. But físico is a physicist. And the physician is going to be medical, like doctor, okay? Then we have gripe and grip. So gripe is the flu, while to say uh, to grip, you say agarrar, agarrar, okay? Azar versus hazard. So, and azar means bad luck and hazard means Perigo, or you should say perigo, ok? Perigo. Idioma versus idiom. So, idioma um, means a language. A language is also um idioma or uma língua. An idiom in Portuguese is expressão idiomática. Ok? So, like a saying. Ingenuidade versus ingenuity. I actually learned this one while doing this post. Um, I didn't know the meaning in English, to be honest. So, ingenuity actually in Portuguese is going to be criatividade. And ingenuidade is na naivety, so when you're naive, okay? Then we have injuria versus injury, also not to be confused. Injuria is when someone commits perjury, so it's perjury. While an injury in Portuguese is going to be ferimento or ferida. Another common mistake is jarra versus jar. So jarra is going to be a jug, okay? Jar is going to be boião, boião. Journal versus journal. So, um, there is only one letter separate them, but they mean different things. So, journal in Portuguese is a newspaper. A journal is either revista, especializada, so a specialized kind of magazine. And it can also be diário like a diary, right? Your journal where you write about stuff. Okay, diário. Lasso versus lace. Lasso is a bow and lace is a renda, a type of fabric. Renda. Leitura versus lecture. So, leitura is a reading. 
lecture, we're gonna say aula or palestra or lição. Then we have legenda versus legend. Again, two very common false friends. Legenda is gonna be the subtitles or the captions. While a legend, we're gonna say lenda in Portuguese, lenda. Livraria versus library. I used to make a lot of mistakes with this. So, livraria is a bookstore, okay? Library in Portuguese is biblioteca. So, I made the mistakes the other way around. In English, I used the wrong word, okay? Biblioteca is library, okay? So, the next one is <coughs> lunch versus lunch. So, I think they come kind of from the same family again. Uh, but lunch in Portuguese means snack, while lunch we say almoço, almoço, okay? Then we have maior versus mayor. So maior is bigger, all right? It's an adjective and it means bigger or an adjective. <laughs> and mayor we say presidente da câmara, presidente da câmara. Then we have mistura versus moisture. Kind of sound the same, but mistura means mixture, like a mix. And moisture, we say umidade. The H, uh, we write it with H, but there is uh, no sound. The H is silent. Okay. Then we have noticia versus notice. Noticia, uh, we say um, for the news noticia or noticias and notice is aviso in portuguese aviso then we have novela versus novel novela is a soap opera okay novel we say romance romance next we have oficio versus office Oficio is a profession. It's an old word somehow to say profession. And office is uh, escritório or faster escritório. Okay? Then we have parentes versus parents. Parentes are our relatives, while parents we say pais. Pais. All right, pais also can mean the fathers, but it also means the parents, all right? Next, we have a word that we write exactly the same in both languages. We have pasta and pasta. So slightly different sounds, um, but still similar, but they mean different things. So <clears throat> in Portuguese, pasta, is not for eating. A pasta is either a briefcase or a folder. Uh, while in English, pasta, so the English word pasta, we say massa. Massa. Okay? Uh, then we have policia versus policy. So policia means police, the police. And policy, we're gonna say politica or políticas or diretriz, okay? Uh, for example, eles foram mandados parar pela polícia, so the police told them to stop or to halt. As políticas da empresa, assim o exigem, the company's policies demanded, okay? Then we have prejuízo versus prejudice, again, similar but meaning different things. Prejuízo is a loss, or like uh, o prejuízo foi grande para a empresa, the losses were big for the company. Um, but pre, uh, prejudice, we say preconceito, okay? Há muito preconceito neste mundo. There is a lot of prejudice in this world. Not cool, right? Then we have a funny one, we have preservativo versus preservative. So preservativo is a condom, okay? Not to be confused with a, with a preservative, which in Portuguese is conservante, 
conservante, ok? You're more likely to find a conservante in your drink than a preservativo, ok? So bear that in mind. Pretender versus pretend or to pretend. Pretender in Portuguese is to intend to do something, while to pretend is actually fingir, or like children normally like to say it, fazer de conta, fazer de conta, okay? It's a more slangish version of the word. Then we have puxar and push. This is such a mind twister um, <clears throat> or brain twister. Like puxar doesn't mean to pull or to pull, it means to push, okay? Push. Okay, let's try it again. So this one is a really brain twister because puxar does not mean to push, no, it means to pull, okay? Puxar is to pull, okay? If you want to say to push, you have to say empurrar, empurrar. You're gonna see this uh, indoors and, and, and stuff like that, okay? All right, so then we have realizar versus realize. So realizar means to perform or to carry out something. Um, when you realize something in Portuguese, you should use the words aperceber-se or notar. For example, eu realizei muitos eventos no passado, that means I carried out many events in the past. While eu notei que tu estavas a mancar, means I realized that you were limping. Okay? Then we have Recipient versus recipient. So, recipient means container, while recipient means, uh, or you should say, as destinatário in Portuguese. All right? Then we have recordar versus record. Also similar, but they are different. Recordar means to remember something in Portuguese. If you want to say to record, you have to say gravar, gravar. Then we have refrigerant versus refrigerant. So refrigerant um, actually in Portuguese can mean a refrigerant as well, like in English, but normally that's a, not a very common word to use, right? Even in English, I don't think uh, a refrigerant, which is a liquid to cool down things, is a very common word that we use. So, the common use of this word in Portuguese uh, means a soda or a soft drink, okay, like cola, Coca Cola, or something, okay? Resumo versus resume. So, resumo is a summary, while to resume in Portuguese is retomar. Retirado versus retired. So retirado is when something is withdrawn. For example, um medicamento foi retirado de circulação. The medicine was withdrawn from circulation. I don't know if you can say it like this, but it's like it's no longer available for buying. And uh, ele é reformado means he is retired. So Retired, we say reformado or aposentado, okay? Then we have senhor versus senior, can kind of sound the same, but senhor means sir or mister in Portuguese, and senior is um, someone that is older, right? We can say also like senior, senior, okay? Sensível or sensível versus sensible. Sensível means sensitive in Portuguese, while sensible is sensato or sensata, depending what you are um, speaking about. Then we have support versus support. So, support um, is like uh, withstand, so something that can withstand something else, right? 
and support is um, apoyar. To support is apoyar. Okay. And finally, we have tasha versus tax. So tasha is actually a fee, while tax in Portuguese we say imposto. You know, you can't run from that. So I hope that you enjoyed this, uh, you know, bundle of Portuguese English false friends. And um, I hope you're a little less confused right now. Uh, tell me in the comments below if you've had any funny moments using a false friend when you shouldn't have used it. And also tell me if I forgot any false friends because there are so many I am bound to forget some. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope to, to see your comments below here. Uh, also don't forget to subscribe uh, to receive more videos like this. I've been a bit away of YouTube, but now I'm intending to coming back. So just, you know, hit subscribe, keep following me, keep telling me if you like my content. And if you have any ideas for videos, also let me know. Don't forget to like this video and I say bye-bye to you. See you soon. Adeus, beijinhos.